to be really honest, I can't say that I miss um, anything really uh, besides friends and family. Um, I absolutely love it here in Australia. Um, like Michelle said, you know, you have to have a good mindset or a growth mindset and we've taken that on board and just want to learn the, the Aussie way. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't really miss anything really from South Africa, but it's definitely worth it. It is, it is expensive to make the move as well, but it's definitely worth it. I will do it over again if I have to, but um, it's absolutely worth it. And also just don't talk about it for years and then decide to do it. If you've got that seed planted, do it because it takes a while. It, it is a process. You I'm Dr. Shamini Tablanche, ex-corporate and academia girl, turned CEO and board member of several companies and mother of four little extraordinary kids. But it wasn't that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the know-how and the time to focus on designing and really going after the life that I so wanted to live. A life of freedom, of fairness and of being fair dinkum to who I really was and what I wanted to get out of this fleeting time that we have on Mother Earth. Fast forward to many lessons learned and moving halfway around the world to the most amazing country, you'll see the life that I now live. One that gives me more safety and freedom than I ever thought would be possible and that really only existed as a daydream while I was living in South Africa. I created Chamonix TV to give you true spot advice on how you can also live a life in this amazing country and so that you can see how another couple like us now live in Australia with four little kids here in Down Under and I'll be providing you with step by step strategies so that you can make your Aussie dream a reality too. If you're a keen future Aussie who's looking to create a life that excites you and offers you safety, freedom and opportunity, you have come to the right place my friend. Welcome aboard. Before we continue with the episode I just quickly wanted to hop in here to let you know that migration made easy our signature and sought after course will be closing its doors very soon in the next few days. If you want to be part of the most comprehensive program, we will help you plan, apply for and make the move to Australia as soon as possible, where we maximize your chances of actually making it over without struggling to know where to start, how to land that perfect job and just what to do to come here you need to be in on Migration Made Easy. We won't be opening the doors again for months. So if you wanna be taken from a zero to a migration hero, hop onto showmanytv.com.au forward slash now and make sure that you get in as soon as possible. All right, my friend, let's hop into the episode. Hi, Kuni and Michelle, how are you guys going all the way from Perth? Hi, Shamuni. yeah, we're doing very well, thank you. Very well. <laughs> That's good, and it's uh, nice, and, and Christmas time in the air, I love it. It's uh, your first Christmas in Australia as well. What are you planning for Christmas? Let's start at that side. <laughs> so um, we are going to Gilderton side just to go and just take a few days off because Fred needs to, or Kuni needs to work. Um, so we're just taking Christmas and the day after Christmas off just to go and travel a little bit more into Perth because we've only really been in Perth and Lancelin side. So yeah, well, we're very excited for our first Christmas in Australia. <laughs> that is very true. Your first Christmas is special. I hope you've got your prawns organized for the Barbie. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've learned, learned about the prawn Barbie for Christmas. That's a big thing in Australia. Yes. Yeah okay good yeah it's beautiful up that way it's um it's really hot you can just some some ad advice is take your fly screens with you because you can it can often get a bit intimidating sometimes the flies you know you have like a hat and you can put a little fly screen over it so that might help and um yeah the the cold beverages they are very <laughs> important <laughs> to keep you cool Absolutely. Pretty cool, absolutely. So, Guni, Fred, which way do we go? Is it Guni or is it Fred? <laughs> it's actually Fred. Now that I've that I've moved to to Australia, 
Uh, it's just better to pronounce. And um, yeah, I prefer it that way. <laughs> so what is your birth name? Uh, Frederick. Frederick. So where does Kuni come from? Is it Frederick Kunrad? That's right. Yes. Yes. So it um, was basically a nickname, but uh, like I said, I prefer my first name. So Fred is a, is a good common name. Were you called Fred at school or were you called Kuni? Kuni, yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's one of the beauties of coming to Australia or going to any other country for that matter is you can reinvent yourself and you can decide how you want to change your name. And we see that with a lot of South Africans, especially when the pronunciation is a little bit tricky, you know, like cat. <laughs> that's a hard one for the, the Aussies to say. Gert. Cat yes. and Gert doesn't sound the same at all. So, <laughs> and Michelle, you must just be flying with your name because, like, that's easy in Afrikaans and in English. Yes, yes. You know, like, luckily, Michelle is a very common Afrikaans and English name. So it's not very difficult for them to pronounce it. They just misspell it. So, like, a lot of when I like order stuff, then it's like, I've got a package for Michael. And I'm like, no, it's Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> But I can be a Michael if you have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. And how long have you guys been here in Australia for? Uh, nearly eight months now. Eight months. That's a lot. So let me do the math. So you came in Feb? March. March. Yes. Came in March. Yep. Please give us the background. When did you decide to start thinking about coming to Australia and how did that process evolve for you? So we started thinking about um, coming to Australia really in about in 2018, but we first wanted to actually go to New Zealand. So we started with a New Zealand agent and then we just decided that there's not a, a lot of opportunities, especially in both occupations in New Zealand. And we, and we started to say, okay, now maybe we need to have a look at Australia. So we've really been thinking and kind of starting the whole process in December 2018. And then what, how did you approach it? What, what, what did you come over with a job opportunity? Yes, yeah, so um, we came over on a 482 visa, which is a short stream sponsorship visa. I was really lucky enough that the company that I worked for in South Africa um, opened three branches in Australia and one of them was in Perth and there was just that opportunity for me to actually come and which I'm so extremely glad for and um, so yeah so we came over on a 4A2 but we're in the process of going over onto a PR visa which is the 494 but yeah it was it was quite a faith walk you know so that's amazing. Tell me, um, what, what's your occupation then, Michelle? So I'm a business development manager for Four Ways Air Conditioning. So we're in the air conditioning industry. And as you know, air conditioning is a must in Australia, no matter where you are. Um, so yeah, so I've been working for the whole Four Ways group for about 11 years. And yeah. In, in Krugersdorp, because I know you're from Krugersdorp. Did you work for them there always? Yes, yes I did. Hmm. business development manager okay so you travel quite a bit or not so yes I do um, travel a lot in Perth but not like flying out but more like driving out to Mandurah, Port Kennedy, Lancelin side so I get to travel quite a lot <laughs> well that's good you get to see the country yes yes okay and Fred what do you do for a living uh, I'm in the golf industry. Um, golf is my passion, so always been been involved in the golf industry. Uh, I played on tour, on the Sunshine Tour, then got into coaching. And um, yeah, now with the move, I'm still in the golf industry. <laughs> well, so there's I mean, a lot of golf in Australia, so I'm sure you're pretty yep. busy. <laughs> yep. So um, yeah, so um, I'm in retail, so in sales. Um so yes, no, uh, very, very fortunate to to have the to have the job there. Um, it was our second day in Perth, and I saw this job opportunity. And the very next day, I applied for the position and got the job. So wow. very fortunate. Wow, that's amazing. God has definitely been very good for you guys. That's great. 
Yeah. Um, so Fred, is that, are you in, with one shop every day or do you move around? No, so I'm, I'm based in one in one location, um, but obviously if, 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 there's, if there's help needed at another branch, I will go there, yeah. And do you do a little bit of golf coaching on the side? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Before before working hours and after working hours, um, yeah. Golf okay. is my passion and people, coaching as well. How can people find out about your golf coaching? I'd love to, you know, maybe we can get you a few more coaching uh, gigs signed up. Yeah, so um, I'm looking for golf box. So um, everyone knows Fred and golf box, so they can just phone and redirect me to, um, or redirect them to me. Okay, and that's in... So where, where do you do the golf coaching? Is that a specific golf course? No, it's actually in our uh, in our in store on the simulators. Yeah, so um, wow. pretty advanced technology. Yeah, so we can pick up all the data of your swing. Yeah, and take it from there. Wow, you know I'm still old fashioned in my brain. I'm thinking you're running on the course somewhere or in the driving range. <laughs> it's like, and then you pick up all the balls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, that's amazing. So when you did your your golf uh, career in South Africa, was it also, so you said you did say coaching in South yep. Africa? Yes. So is the coaching that you're doing here very similar to what you did in South Africa? No. So in South Africa, it was, um, I had like full-time students. So that will be running from eight until five o'clock in the afternoon. So crazy busy outside where now it's just like coaching on the side maybe you know, five lessons a week. So not as many coaching opportunities though, yet. Would you like to be a full-time coach again or do you enjoy the retail side of it? Yeah, for now, for now, I like the new challenge, but there are lots of opportunities. So I think in the future, yes, maybe. And how about the actual playing? How often do you get to play? I'm, I'm thinking Michelle is probably going to think, oh, he's not home enough because <laughs> I know <laughs> golf is a long game. <laughs> yeah, so I play, I play every every off day. Um, I play with with members that's that's part from Golf Box, and just to you know play different courses and experience different courses. So I play every week, and uh, Michelle also took up golf recently. Ooh. that's exciting well, then you can well. play all the time because then there's no problem it's not like well he's not coming home because he's on the golf course again <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's, it's a nice thing um since me and Fred started dating which is about 14 years ago and um, he was already playing golf so it was nice because I kind of learned how golf works and yeah and when we moved over to Australia I really wanted to um basically start up golf so it's something that we can do together and it's really been so nice yeah yeah that's great I know Carl and I my husband and I did the same thing before we had children actually I learned to play golf when we moved to Australia because we had no kids we he loved playing golf as most men or many men in South Africa I guess do and uh, he said, okay, well, he wanted to go and live in this nice golf estate. So we bought a house right on the golf estate. And we did play golf every Saturday and every Sunday for a year long. It was amazing. I loved it because I used to play tennis and other sports, but I'd never played golf before. So he taught me to play golf. And we were just like, we did spend some time in the 19th hole as well. We did. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's a great, it's really a great game. If you can play it together, it's um, it's lovely. And you know what? You're out in such beautiful country land here in Australia. I'm sure you guys have seen lots of kangaroos on the course. Oh, yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Amazing to see, see the kangaroos, yep. Yes, yeah, they do like to um, venture hop, hop, hop all over early mornings, late afternoons. Um, and then in the middle of the day, they just lays next to this on the side yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Michelle tell me a little bit about your work culture here versus in South Africa are you pretty much still doing the same role that you did yes I am still doing um, the same role I've really been fortunate that one of my colleagues that I do work with is also a South African and I think if it wasn't for her then you know maybe we wouldn't have adjusted in so quickly 
Um, because like, you know, like when you get to Australia, it's, it's hard. It's a hard journey. It's challenging. But I have to say, you know, it was really amazing having her because she told us the ins and outs. Like the first day we arrived here, yeah, you know, it was like we ate and then we went to bed. And then it was like, OK, we need to get a tax number. Okay, you need to open a bank account. OK, you need to get your driver's license. And, you know, like just like learning all of the stuff like that your bank card comes in the post that was like I was like no that can't be like are you sure like won't you give it to me now no it's gonna get delivered by post I'm like well there's nobody gonna take it you know that's the that's that's what you think because like in South Africa where we're from nothing you can't send anything with the post so you know so that's quite nice because we kind of have that culture still but we do work um with Australians and I have to say, it's amazing. I think that you need to have the right mindset and remember that there are different cultures in Australia, not only your culture. And you kind of have to adjust and try and just make it work and try to fit in. Mm. Yes, very true. It is not your culture. It's not your land either. It, it, we can come and live with the people and we can become a part of it. But when we do start off, you know, we are being given a, an opportunity by another country opening up its arms essentially to us to say, okay, how about a second chance at life? Um, so, yeah, what do you do when you move to somebody else's house or into, like, you, you know, you follow their rules and you, yep. and then if you've been there long enough, maybe you can start pushing a little bit of your own ideas, but um, you got to first <laughs> learn the lingo. And what I found interesting is, you know, often when you see something new in Australia, you'll go, why on earth do the Aussies do it that way? Because you don't, you don't know what the reasoning is behind it. One of the things is like having the main bedroom of the house in the front, it's like the first room that you get when you go into the house. It's so weird for South Africans. Your main bedroom is always hidden way at the back where nobody can see it kind of thing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, as, as, soon, as soon as you start asking questions and finding out, then you learn, well, that's a good place to have a bedroom if you have got children and things, because if you're in the front, then you know what's coming and going in and out of your house, you know. So it's, <laughs> it's a good spot in that regard. And also your front bed, the, the window, look out into the front of the, you know, of the house. We don't usually have walls outside our bedroom windows. So when you're in your bedroom and you look out, you can see the street and you can see what's happening out there. So it's like, it's almost like, uh, what do you call those wachter that, that stand on the on the castle walls and you know, they've got the, I don't know what's <laughs> yeah. open the door and they close it. And <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so it's, it's, um, it's important that you assimilate in into Australia into the culture. But um, yeah, we should also remember where we come from and what we bring with us. So in that, in that sense, what's the thing that you guys miss the most at this point in time? Now, friends and family aside, because you will miss friends and family regardless of where you move to in life. To be really honest, I can't say that I miss um, anything really uh, besides friends and family. Um, I absolutely love it here in Australia. Um, like Michelle said, you know, you have to have a good mindset or a growth mindset, and we've taken that on board and just want to learn the, the Aussie way. Um, yeah, so I, I don't really miss anything really from South Africa. And you, Michelle? I have to say, uh, I agree because for two years, we kind of corrected our mindset and thinking that, you know, we we are going to be without friends, we are going to be without family, but we've been fortunate enough to make new friends in Australia and the friends have become family. And that's the thing, like everything that we had in South Africa, we've got in Australia if it's not better. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I have to, I think maybe the thing that, I'm, that I miss most is maybe like having, because we had a dog in South Africa and I think that's what I miss. But we're also in that mindset that we want to get a dog, but we first just want to travel and see Australia before we actually go back and get a dog. Because a dog is like, a, it's like a child. You, you go everywhere with it. And 
Australia is, we're fortunate enough where most of the restaurants are dog friendly. You've got the dog beaches. People walk their dogs three, four times a day. And that was something that we kind of had to get used to because everyone walks where they want to go. Yes, there is a lot of walking happening. And yes, the dogs go with most, I say most places. Can't go to school, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the, when you go to pick up your children, many parents walk to school and they wait outside the school gates with their dog with them because that's another opportunity, as you said, to take the dog for a walk. And people are generally really good. They always have these little poo bags that they pick the doggy poo up and then there's a, usually a bin close by and most of the times the bins are not overflowing. So you can always, you know, use your public, your, the tax that you paid and use the public facilities and um, yeah, just live your life um, in the community very easily. Have you guys been able to do some picnics or barbecues uh, on the free barbecue facilities yet? Yes, absolutely. We love it. We love being, um, well, in South Africa, we know um, it was hard being outside and, and walk freely without looking over your shoulders. So over here, you know, we, we, we're trying to make the most of it and not go the South African way where you just really stay indoors. So we're actually going out now more often and and go to go to the park and 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 use all, all the bra facilities and it's amazing to have gas, you know, free gas. And how so, clean yeah. it is. It's always yep. clean. It's not like someone will actually have a barbecue and just leave it dirty. It's like they actually think about the person that's coming after them. So every time you, we actually go to the barbecues, it, it's clean. And there's gas and everyone is just so friendly. You can just leave your stuff there and nothing is ever going to get taken. And the other bargain that I found is there's toilet paper in the public toilets. It's like, what? <laughs> yes. And it's clean and it's really clean. Yes, no, it is. It's, um, it's pretty special. So I know we all pay a lot of tax money every month, every year, essentially. But I don't mind paying tax if I can see where my tax money goes to. 100%. Absolutely. How many potholes have you guys seen on the roads yet here? <laughs> I think in winter, uh, on my way to work, I saw a few. But on my so the very next day, it was fixed already. So um, amazing. Yes. That's right. I also have have only saw... <laughs> yeah, Michelle? I've, I've also only seen one on my way to work and that same afternoon as I was driving home it was already fixed up I was like oh my goodness I can't believe it's all I said to Fred I saw a bottle but when I when I got home it was already gone <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's not like we live in this magic land and things don't break of course things break of course we have the same bitumen or tear tear paya as we call in Afrikaans that we get in South Africa yes it's just, it's not made from any magical stuff they also, when it rains and there's a little hole that starts, it definitely starts deteriorating, sure. but it gets fixed. And that's, that's the important aspect of it. Um, again, you pay your tax money, you see, it, you see it everywhere around you all the time. So it's, it's actually a, a pleasure to pay your tax at the end of the year and go, that's fine, I'm doing this because look around us, we can all live. Your bins get collected amazingly by one person with a truck. There's not like lots and lots and lots of helpers at the back and you have a nice big wheelie bin. There's not like the dogs come and open the trash. I don't know when was in Creer's door how it worked, but from my memory, how it used to work where we live, is it was just the black bag that you put outside in yeah. a bag form. And then dogs and cats and everybody else just come and often open yeah. it up and it becomes a messy business. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's amazing. We, we really love it. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, everything works. Everything works. Uh, people are abiding the rules. Um, yeah, it's, and friendly. People are friendly. Like in, in South Africa, if, if someone really, if someone asks you, how are you doing? You kind of like thinking, what do you want from me in a way? But, you know, <laughs> yeah, in Australia, I feel like people are really, caring and they actually want to know how are you doing and it's just a little bit more a comfortable environment in a way 
And how did your family take it when you broke the news to them that you are planning to come over? Uh, I think um, some some of the family members are were were really happy for us, and I think some of them were, you know, kind of against the idea because um, obviously we're going to miss each other. But um, I think yeah, everyone's pretty supportive. Uh, but we do we do miss each other. But um, yeah, I think they're pretty supportive. Yeah, you're always gonna you're always gonna have a few members in your family that are always gonna say, you know, South Africa is gonna be better. Why do you want to move away? Because remember, for years you've been in this comfort zone where you had family where you can just drive down to their house, have a cup of coffee and go back or phone them up and let's just go and have dinner somewhere. And now you kind of have to fall back on doing uh, WhatsApp video calls and not seeing each other as often. But I have to say it is difficult at some times, but you just need to remember why you're here and you know, what do you want for your future? And remember that you took this hard step to be here and just to cherish every moment that you have. Absolutely. Very important to remember that why. The reason that you did it all for. Why you're leaving loved ones behind. It's not easy. But also need to remember that your future is still in front of you, ahead of you. So you have to plan forward and unfortunately can't just plan backwards. How old are you kids? Oh, you kids. How old are you guys? <laughs> I wanted to ask you, how old are your kids, not how old are you kids? <laughs> um, no, 33 and, and 30. So Michelle's 30 and I'm 33. Yep. Yeah, so we don't have any kids. We're, it's just us. Yeah. It makes it easier to move around um, and to move overseas when you move initially without children. It definitely makes it easier because you have fewer people to think about and, you know, who's going to complain on the aeroplane on the flight? <laughs> That's a yes. bit <laughs> <But they're laughs> busy. <laughs> uh, and also the other thing is, you know, which school and this and that. But ultimately, if you do decide to have children later on, then you have already given your children that amazing opportunity of being born in Australia and growing up with all the facilities and the freedom and the fairness that they will have. Uh, an encounter here. You guys are Afrikaans speaking. Do you intend to continue speaking Afrikaans with your children one day? Um, I'm not sure because like one thing that I struggle with is like because a lot of my customers can hear my accent and then in the beginning it was it was quite hard for them to understand what I'm saying and what I'm meaning. So I think we'll probably pop in a few Afrikaans words, but I don't think it will be like how we learned Afrikaans and how we spoke Afrikaans, you know, as our first language. I don't think it will be like that. Yeah, some parents are very like, yes, I'm going to teach them Afrikaans from the start. And, the, and some parents are easygoing. I have friends who are Afrikaans, but they only speak English to their children. And whatever works for you, you know, there's no right and wrong. It's whatever works for you. But what I will say is that your children will never forget where you come from because they will always hear you sounding differently. And, of course, you're going to be sharing with them about your culture and the way you grew up with. And I'm sure there will be some visits back to Oma and Opa one day. Yes. Yes, definitely. So that's why I said, you know, like, you'll, I'll learn them a few Afrikaans words, but majority, I think, would be English. So eight months here in Australia, have you started planning your first trip back to South Africa yet? No, <laughs> we haven't. At this, at this time, I think we were just kind of adjusting, finding a rental, you know, just getting settled in. And then we'll probably have a look maybe by the end of next year. At this stage, we first just want to get um, we first just want to get our PR before we really make plans of going out of the country. So can you just explain to our viewers a little bit about that process of getting your PR? How does it work for a 482 to get PR? So for a 482, that is basically a short stream visa. So it's only valid for two years. And the, the 482 that we are on, it doesn't have a pathway to permanent residency. 
So we have to go over on a visa that actually gives a pathway to permanent residency, which is a 494. So basically that entitles that we need to do a skills assessment and then apply for a completely different kind of visa. And that visa is then valid for five years, which after three years we can start applying for PR. Okay, so it's about a five year plan all in all, more or less. Yes. Coming in till you should have your permanent residency. Yes. Yep. And that's not much at all because, you know, you're working, you're living the life in Australia. The only difference is that you don't have permanent residency yet and you don't have Medicare yet. Is that right? So now on the 494, it's a bridging visa. So you're going to have all the rights that what a permanent resident would have. It's just that it's basically a bridging visa, which means that you are going to be entitled to Medicare and all of the rights that a PR has. See, how great is that? So it's amazing. You're all sorted. What do you have to do to apply for the 494? You said a skills assessment and what are the other things? And then it's basically the same documents that you would have submitted for a 482. The only difference is that um, you need to do a skills assessment to actually show that your skills and your qualification is on par with Australians' um, skills. And then basically it's going to be, you know, like are you going to have to have a reference letter? It's going to be like exactly the same as a 482 visa. So you basically have to do... I think we're gonna, no, we're not gonna, don't have to do a police clearance certificate anymore um, because we obviously already have one, but it's basically gonna be, you just need to make sure that your company is part of the sponsorship of Australia that's governing um, because only a certain parts of companies are allowed to sponsor. They first need to be on the sponsorship list. So it's just about basically getting um, the nomination ready, the sponsorship ready, and then applying for the visa. So the branches that your company started here in Australia, they're, are they run out of South Africa or do you have a, like, is it a whole branch that's been set up here? So it's a whole different branch that has been set up here. So we currently have three, three branches. We've got one in Perth, one in Queensland, and then one in New South Wales. So 80% of the, of the directors are Australian. It's basically just the name that, that keeps on going. Okay, that's interesting. So the other people in the office with you, you said you mentioned one South African. Yes, and then uh, we also do have an Australian, which is very nice because I think that from an Australian's point of view, an Aussie's point of view, you know, like sometimes when we, when me and my colleagues speak of response to each other, because, you know, like sometimes it slips out, but we, we try not to do it because a lot of um, Aussies kind of feel offended because I think it's because they don't understand. And then a lot of them say that the, the Afrikaans language sounds very aggressive. <laughs> it does. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it's like he really, we teach him Afrikaans words, he cheat teaches us you know like Australian slang and what certain stuff means so I have to say I'm really enjoying the environment that I'm working in I'm loving it oh that's great how far away are you from work where you live uh, I'm literally just a 15 minute drive which is amazing <laughs> that is nice and Fred how far are you from your golf box up same as well like 12 15 minutes away oh wow that's amazing do you like to take one car or do you take the train or the bus or how do you do it? Um, yeah, so we just we just take take the car to work. Um, but yeah, now, now that it's getting getting uh, like hotter, the weather's getting hotter. So uh, we're thinking about, you know, just taking the bike. Yeah. You know, and burn, burn a few calories. <laughs> Very clever. Perth has got some beautiful bike roads, bike networks that you can... I used to cycle to the CBD uh, for a while <laughs> when I was working there in Perth. Um, it was a bit of a, we lived further away from, than the distance that I cycled. But what we did is we would drop the, some of the kids at that stage, we didn't have four kids yet. So we would drop some of or the ones that we had at daycare. And then we would continue driving closer to the city and then park at one of the train stations closer to the city park our car there and then start our bike route from there and go to the city. So 
I didn't have to do whatever it would have been 40 kilometers or something or 30 kilometers on the bike. I could just do 15 if I wanted to. And that's a really, a really nice way to do it. And I love going on the bike, especially next to the freeway in Perth. It's beautiful. And uh, if you drive from where we were, we were south to go to the CBD. It's a long stretch if you go right next to the Swan River. And you just see it like it's like it's almost like being on holiday, like you're cycling in this in this space where it's like, what? I'm going to work and it looks like this. It's yeah, it's just beautiful. Really enjoy it. And mm -hmm. most work facilities have what they call end of trip facilities. So they often have showers and a place that you can park your bike. So I'm not sure if it's the same for you guys, but yeah, you just inquire in the area if you wanted to take a shower. It depends on how how hard you trap, you know, you you you, you pedal your bike. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and the other thing you can consider is an e-bike, you know, so you don't have to pedal all the way I if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So what do you guys do on a weekend typically? So like I said, Michelle took up golf now. So um, most of the Saturday mornings go to practice. <laughs> yeah. At the driving range or on the course? A little bit of both, but uh, at the moment it's more like range work for now, learning the basics and um, getting on the course later on. Yeah. Michelle, I have to ask, how is your coach? <laughs> That's the thing, because like sometimes we kind of have disagreements because I'm like, okay, is this now? So I, I'll make a joke and say, is this Fred the coach or Kuni, my husband, that's <laughs> telling me now to do this? Um, but no, he's a wonderful, he's a wonderful coach. He's got a lot of patience. Um, sometimes he needs to show me stuff three, four, five times over. But yeah, I think it's it's a nice bonding experience for us as well. And then yeah, and then like after golfing or driving range, we'll go down to the beach, have a walk. Like yesterday, we just went to Cottesloe and we just walked about six, seven, eight thousand steps, and then just come back, stop, have a coffee. And yeah, it's, it's just amazing to be able to just walk and see how people are leaving their strollers and their, their flip-flops and everything at the beach and nobody's going to take it. And people are just walking with their phones in their pockets and having a chat. Yes, yeah. So yeah, you can easily go for a swim in the beach to cool down, but they also have some amazing public pools around there. So I know, for example, City Beach, you've got a very nice, beautiful, big, I think it's City Beach. Um, and sorry, I'm just looking at Carl to remind me, where was it City Beach that we went to with the kids? Where they've got the new um, outside pool. Anyway, if you're watching this video and you know any better than me, <laughs> please type it for us in the comments below. But yes, they've built a stunning, or pretty much Cottesloe City Beach, yeah. stunning, yeah. beautiful, big public pool there on the beach, essentially. It's like, and yeah, it's so, so cheap and it's clean and it's just state of the art facilities. So the things that we have available to us is, is incredible. And the number of golf courses in Perth, I'm sure if you start playing one now, because we actually tried to see how many golf courses we can cover off in Perth before we had kids. And uh, we, we didn't get to the end. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> we kept going. Some of them are, are more expensive than others. Some of them are really beautiful. Joondalup golf course is one is really gorgeous. Yes. Um, but yes, yeah, so make a list. I'd suggest this, Michelle. Make a list and then say to Fred, okay, Fred, come and teach me, train me at each one of these courses because they're all different. It, it's, you know, it's, it gives you a bit of a different opportunity to look at the angles and read the, the course differently every time. And I also enjoy experiencing the suburbs that way because you drive out there and you see new places that you wouldn't have seen or gone to otherwise. And, um, yeah, it's it's a it's a great thing that you can do the sport together. It's a bit expensive though, I'd say. Golf is, you know, you've got to save up. But luckily, yes. both of you work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And tell me, the last thing I want to know is the food that you eat at the moment. What does that involve? Do you still do lots of South African dishes, or are you just like microwave dinners? 
So I have to say Australia is so health conscious, which is amazing for me. Like if you go to Coles, they've got all of these health stores telling you how good the product is. Um, we basically more or less eat it more or less the same as what we did in South Africa, but we're not specifically tied to a, a brand. So the only thing that I really need to have for my bride broikies is Mrs. Ball's chutney. Other than that, you know, we just, like, I'm not picky about mayonnaise. I'm not picking up, picky about spices. And I think we tend to eat more healthier here um, because we also have a much more healthier lifestyle as well. Um, but yeah, now I'm enjoying it. It just, like, all of the different stuff, like, in South Africa, you didn't have such a big variety of, like, fresh pastas and, you know, just how easy they make it for you to actually make a meal. Um, Biltong, have you found your nearest Biltong shop yet? Yes. So um, we go to Beef Shed in Malaga. So they've got Biltong, they've got drivers, they've got... So it's just, it's amazing because you can basically find everything that you find in a South African shop, you can find at Beef Shed. The, the, the way that they cut the meat is more or less the same cut than what we had in South Africa. And... Like if we're like me and Fred, you know, we speak to each other in Afrikaans and then someone just will say, yo, oh, no, you know, those sticky places are slacker. I want a little bit more fat on mine. <laughs> and they've got the bulldog there has got yellow fat. So... Oh. <laughs> yeah, very important. Yes, Perth has got a, 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 well, a lot of, you can buy beef jerky or built on pretty much most places. But there's also a number of actual South African shops in Perth. And if you feel like fed cook, you know, traditional fed cook, you can you don't have to drive too far and you'll manage to find a fed cook, a really nice one. Or yeah. biscuit. You can buy biscuit in any shop though. Woolworths, Coles. I buy, buy my own my biscuit every every grocery shop. I get my box of my biscuit. Hey, I have to say. I'm trying to be good now. I'm trying to make my own biscuits. I haven't started yet, but I got so far as to get my friend, very kind friend who went to South Africa, to bring me back a biscuit bun. Okay. You know those with a because I've made biscuit in the past. It's just such a mission to like cut it and get and like uh uh uh. So I saw this biscuit bun that you push it in. It's got all the same shapes now, so that's great. So I'm gonna. Try my next batch. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. And like a, a lot of like your local shops like Coles, Woolworths, you know, your Aldi, all of them kind of have a row or an aisle or, a you know, like a small section that's kind of dedicated to, um, you know, South African cuisine and what you get there. Like you'll get your Oma biscuit there, you get like Nando's sauces, more or less, it's yeah. here as well. But where you can get your cream soda, where you can get, um, you know, it's the stuff that you miss, your Robertson's, your inner apartment. But other than that, it's, you need to, because you need to remember why you came to Australia, to learn a new culture, and to, to be basically, to dive into diversity. And you want to try the Australian brands. And like some of the Australian brands is better than what the South African stuff is for me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very true. There's, yeah, most stuff that you have in South Africa, you can pretty much have here. If you don't specifically talk about built on because you get beef jerky, right? it's their own version. Yes, it's not exactly the same, but it's still dried meat. You can buy beef jerky in these little bags. And even at the garages, at the petrol stations and places, like it's, it's very, you can easily get it. The only, the one thing that I buy still that, I mean, I can, I can use another version of an Australian product, but I still like my Aromat. I really do enjoy Aromat. And then every so often I'll buy Peppermint Crisp because in Willys and Coles and wherever they have Peppermint Crisps as well. I'm like, oh, I like that. And, but it's, I mean, I can easily go without it as well. It's not like I'm, forever sitting at home thinking, oh, how am I going to ever get over my peppermint crisp face? <laughs> um, and yes, there are some lovely, interesting things to try. I don't know if you've seen our grocery video that we did um, very recently for Chamonix TV. So just go and look at episode, what was it, 121, I think, um, where we did the grocery haul. I spoke to Chava about it. And 
it's incredible how much tuna for example you get here and all the different flavors that you get like you just mentioned the pasta but here's like the tuna sweet chili and teriyaki and it's too many to, to list it's um lots of options to try out and you get it small cans big cans <laughs> <laughs> okay if you both gotta tell me what's the best thing for you about living in australia what would you say uh, i'll say freedom and how clean it is i'll have to say the the fact that i that i feel safe that i can go to bed at night not stressing that someone's gonna break in you know like one night it was like seven o'clock at night it was already dark and i walked to the pharmacy and like not having that fear that someone is just going to come behind and grab you or you know like because i think like when you explain to australians how it is in south africa they can't really imagine no it can't be that bad you know like we've really been fortunate enough that nothing has happened to us but stuff really bad stuff has happened to our friends and to our family and that's why you decided to make this move. So I think the safety, how clean it is, how everything is free and just how amazing it is that you can just be free. Very, very good. I love it. It is freedom and opportunity. It's amazing. And the fact that you guys came at a very good age, you have still such a big part of your life to live. The younger you are when you come over, the easier it's going to be for you going forward. So good on you guys for being brave and, and taking the leap because a lot of people think about it, but they just don't have that courage to step forward. So if you have a, a bit of advice for somebody that's in that boat, that they're like, oh, I want to, I'm not sure, what would you say to them? I'll say stay patient. It is a process. Um, but it's definitely worth it. It is it is expensive to make the move as well, but it's definitely worth it. I will do it over again if I have to, but um, it's absolutely worth it. And also just don't talk about it for years and then decide to do it. If you've got that seed planted, do it because it takes a while. It, it is a process. You do get frustrated. You don't get answers from migration agents. And the people are thinking that it's because nothing is happening. And yes, it is because nothing is happening. But I think we as South Africans tend to, when we send an email or when we phone, to get a response immediately. And you need to kind of keep in mind that there is a time difference. There is differences in everything that we do, but to not wait, to jump in and just do it. Absolutely. Jump in, both feet. You can do it. Yes. <laughs> Lovely to chat to you. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. It will definitely help somebody else watching it today in their living room, in their car, wherever they are, in their podcast, maybe just in their ears. Uh, Thank you for your encouragement and for showing others that it is possible to come and make this life in Australia a better life for yourself. Uh, thank you, thank Shamini. you Shamini. Thank you, Shamini. Take care, guys. Enjoy the golf. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Bye. 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 Thanks for watching today's episode. I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you will come and join us inside a migration made easy, which is going to close its doors pretty soon in the next few days. So if you want to make sure that you are in with the most comprehensive program where we help you plan, apply for and make the move to Australia without struggling to know where to start or if you even qualify and we make you go from a zero to a migration hero, hop on to shamanitv.com.au forward slash now in capital letters, the now, and you will get all the information that you need on how you can join us. Make sure, as I said, you do that within the next few days because those will be closing very soon. Thanks for watching today's episode and for coming back every week. I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you will hit the subscribe button so that you are notified when our next episode is released. All right, my friend, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. All right. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you had fun, please remember to hit that subscribe button and then it will make sure that you never miss a thing. 
I'll see you same time and same place next week. Bye for now.